Star Wars 7x7 episode 2,594. 94. Now that we've had some time to spend with the Bad Batch, it's easy to see how they are redefining the characters in the wake of their meeting with and interactions with Omega. Punch it. <laughs> Hey Rebel Rouser, I'm Alan Voivod and this is Star Wars 7x7, your daily dose of Star Wars joy and thank you so much for joining me for it. So when we first met the Bad Batch, that was back in Season 7 of The Clone Wars, it was that very first story arc and yes, we'd been introduced to them previously if you had ever checked out The Clone Wars Legacy Project which explained some of the upcoming stories that they had in mind and did story reels for other things to kind of start building out some of those stories right the Bad Batch was part of that situation and the first story arc did build on that but definitely made some changes that being said that was when we really got to meet the Bad Batch and really get to know them and their specialties and the fact that they're practically nicknamed for their specialties which you know ultimately when you think about it I guess it kind of makes sense after all I remember at the time going come they could they have come up with a better name for Hunter than he's the guy who hunts people down and tech he's the guy who works with tech right I mean you know, then again, it's kind of obvious. And even thinking back to Echo, right? So his origin situation is that he had a tendency to repeat people's orders when they were given to him. And so his other, you know, fellow cone troopers got aggravated with that and they gave him the nickname Echo as a result. So, you know, very literal nicknames. But in addition to the fact that the literal <laughs> nicknames for the Bad Batch corresponded to their particular specialties, it was also easy to see how those particular specialties translated into personality archetypes, if you will, like Wrecker being a fist first and thinking later, if at all, kind of person and tech being a very you know, data oriented, all about the screens and possibly suffering the social interaction space as a result. You've got Hunter who is very aware of details within his environment and seems to have developed an empathetic sense as well. And then you have Crosshair, of course, for whom stillness and reticence are necessary necessary for the kind of job that he used to perform where you know if he is shooting things at long distances for example he has to be able to control himself as tightly as possible and kind of removing echo from this because as is noted by the bad batch he is a reg even though he is part of the bad batch but he hasn't been treated with the same mutations if you will or you know the similar kind of mutation whatever that might have taken in terms of its form now, with the introduction of Omega into the family unit of the Bad Batch, there's an entirely new set of roles that are layering over the Bad Batch characters. And, funnily enough, those roles also kind of match up with their personalities as well. So, for example, Hunter being the leader of the Bad Batch, being the one probably with the greatest capability for empathy, and, of course, our protagonist for the show as far as the Bad Batch goes, he would be the one most naturally suited to be a father figure for Omega. As for Wrecker, well, you know, he has to be the brother figure because he and Omega are actually playmates. Like, they goof around with each other. So I guess the question of whether Wrecker is more of an older brother figure or a younger brother figure for Omega, yeah, you could probably have a debate either way about that. Then you have Tech, and if you were to look at Tech in comparison to Wrecker and Hunter, you know that he's much more on the hunter side of things in terms of being an adult toward Omega, right? He doesn't play with Omega the same way that Wrecker does. In fact, he's actually rather emotionally detached from her, and certainly he you know, thinks about her and cares for her survival, but yeah, he's not emotionally invested in the same way. Like, he is just sort of in his own world, and in that sense, he's almost more crazy uncle than anything else. And crazy, of course, doesn't have to be all, you know, like wild and wacky or anything like that. Crazy can be a quiet kind of crazy too. And it can be a sort of, wow, like, I don't even understand what's going on in your head kind of crazy. And yeah, sometimes it's like that with tech. 
And then you have Echo, who is, yeah, this one was a little tougher to figure out for me at least, but you know, in thinking about the differences between Echo and the rest of the Bad Batch, it occurred to me that it's very likely that Echo is actually older than the rest of the members of the Bad Batch. So <laughs> I thought to myself, all right, well, if he is in a older generation of clones, then you know, maybe he is the sort of grandfather of the group in a way. And the more I thought about it, the more I felt comfortable with that assessment. I mean, Echo is dispensing wisdom to Omega at the beginning of this most recent episode, Return to Kamino, when she is frustrated about how long it's taking to get the Havoc Marauder ready to go after Hunter, and he's the one trying to help her keep her cool and understand that it's all part of the process and that they'll you know, do whatever they can to get ready first, but they can't go off looking for Hunter without being prepared. And then, you know, in thinking about the episode reunion, that was episode eight after everybody got their chips out and they were still on Bracca, and Hunter said, hey, while we're here, we should probably salvage some of this stuff and bring it back to Sid. And Echo was the one who was saying to Hunter, you know, like, this is ridiculous. We are soldiers, not smugglers. But by this point, Everybody else has kind of made the switch, right? Hunter is on board with this new mercenary life. Like he's leading his team because this is what needs to happen in the situation within which they find themselves. Wrecker is just, yeah, just point me at something to smash and I'll smash it. And Tech has already made the practical jump. Like he made that jump back in episode two in Cut and Run when he was already saying, well, you know, technically we're deserters right now anyway. So yeah, let's just move on. So yes, Echo being more of a curmudgeonly grandfather kind of figure, dispensing wisdom, but also kind of stuck in his ways and needing to be brought along with the rest of the gang and with hopes that things will change. And that leads me to Crosshair, who I guess you could say is kind of the, you know, black sheep of the family, as it were. I mean, chances are you're always going to have an idealist in the family who, you know, wants everybody to be able to get together. And that's certainly what Omega is in relation to Crosshair. Like, she sees him as her brother and, you know, wants to bring him in, wants to fix him. And certainly the members of the Bad Batch feel similarly about it, but I think they're probably going to end up being more practical about it in the long run because Crosshair doesn't seem to be just a ne'er-do-well who needs help. He is somebody who seems to have entirely bought into the Empire's ideology at this point, and so it's going to be really interesting to see how that dynamic plays out as we get to the season finale of The Bad Batch later this week and possibly into season two as well. And so there you go. That is a look at the character development of The Bad Batch from from the Clone Wars Season 7 and coming through this first season of The Bad Batch, and that is going to do it for this episode of the show as well. It just remains for me to say thank you so much for joining me for it as always, and may the Force be with you wherever in the world you may be. Star Wars 7x7 is not endorsed or sponsored yet by Lucasfilm Limited, Disney, or 20th Century Fox, and is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Star Wars, the Star Wars logo, all names and pictures of Star Wars characters, vehicles, and any other Star Wars related items, are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Lucasfilm Limited, other respective trademark and copyright holders, may the Force be with them. All original content is copyright 2021 by Star Wars 7x7. We hope you love it.